20, 30 minutes. I'm going to try and make it as brief as I can. Yeah, you're good. Is talk about recruiting. I want to give you guys whatever information that I can give you. Um, and if you guys have questions, you guys can ask. Um, I assume you guys are here because you guys have aspirations of playing at the next level. And um, over the last, geez, 15 years, um, I've been getting phone calls from college coaches from every level, from small college to Division One and every place in between. And it's kind of amazing how they all ask a lot of the same questions um, and almost in the same order. So um, I'll give you what knowledge I have. And again, if you guys have questions, just fire away. Um, I, I, I want to make sure you guys understand what we're talking about. And, and um, a lot of this stuff is common sense. It's stuff that you guys probably already know. But I want to kind of give you, a, again, a little summation of, of what I the conversations look like on my end, okay? First of all, as you guys know, um, college coaches, bottom line, they get paid, they get hired and paid to, to win basketball games, okay? So obviously they wanna make sure that you guys are great kids, they wanna make sure you're great students, all that stuff, and we're gonna cover that. But bottom line, they have to start with uh, being a great player. That's where you guys obviously, um, you know, the conversation started. And a lot of them want to break it down into several, several different pieces, okay? Some of which you guys can control and others you can't. Um, so a lot of times, you know, again, college coach calls and he's checking in on a different kid. And the first thing he asks is, and again, a lot of times it'll be based on position and what needs they have. But let's say they're calling about a guard. You know, they want to know what kind of skill set he has. So that's always one question, you know, that they're going to ask. Uh, you know, how does he shoot, dribble, pass? Uh, you know, is he a, guy, a hoop junkie? Is he in the gym all the time? Um, they want to know about your work ethic and that you guys um, are working on your skill. That is something that you guys have. The more time that you put in the gym, um, working on your shooting, your ball handling, your passing, it's, it's definitely a craft that you can perfect, right? Um, so that, that's going to be a direct result of how much time you put in the gym and how hard you're willing to work. And obviously there's some natural talent there, but it's something that you can improve on, you know, every single day, every single time you, you step in the gym, okay? So that's one thing. I get asked a lot about athleticism. You know, is he quick? Does he have a great burst? Is he laterally quick? Can he guard? Uh, you know, is his hands, how are his hands? Does he have great hands? Um, is, is he a leaper? Can he get off the ground? Does he sh uh, shoot a true jump shot? You know, things like that. Because again, it's all about separating yourself. They're trying to decide on, on you know, they want to find the guy that's the, 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 as quick and as athletic as humanly possible, right? How strong is he? Again, and then they want to know, they'll, they'll ask me questions about your work ethic. Is he a guy that wants to improve his athleticism? Is he a guy that's going to be working out, um, you know, in the off season? Is he a guy that's going to put in that time? Um, and I think that's a, obviously a big factor is because they'll know if whether you're going to be a guy that's going to be able to improve, right? Again, something that you guys have complete control over. You know, if you want to improve your burst, I know that everybody's body is limited, but it's something that you can improve on. You can get stronger. Um, and sometimes people develop at different ages, you know, as far as, you know, uh, their maturity and whatnot. But again, it's something if you work at it, you will get stronger. You can get more flexible. You can get, you know, more agile um, and all of that. So it's something that you can improve on. Another big one that they ask about is how tough is he? Is, you know, is he, a, is he a tough kid? Is he mentally tough? Um, does he take instruction? Um, is he a kid that, that is a leader? Does he show leadership qualities? You know, does he want to get coached? Um, and that's the mental side of the game. I think every player can think of a kid um, that practices nonstop um, and, and has a great skill set, but may not have the mental edge to perform. And so um, he may have great skills, but when the games come, he may not, you know, he, he doesn't show his full skill set because for whatever reason, something in his mind is holding him back. And you also know a kid, kids at your school or whatever that that maybe don't even pick up a basketball until <laughs> November 1st and they've been playing football, but because they're so tough and they play so hard that they can be a major fa uh, factor in winning and losing basketball games because they've got a great mental edge to them. They're tough. You know, they want to get in there and, and do all the dirty work, but that comes down to their mental toughness. And again, I think that's something that, can that you can mature and improve on. You know, you can put yourself constantly in situations where you're uncomfortable work through some of those things to make you tougher, to make you more mentally focused. Um, 
And that has a lot to do with maturity and your guys' willingness to improve on that and be understanding a lot about that growth versus fixed mindset that we passed out last night, where when you get challenges, are you willing to accept that challenge and continue to improve? So again, it's something that, that you, can, you can get better at. And the last question, and it's, it is totally out of your control, is size, okay? Basket's 10 feet in the air, so the reality is, if you're 6'6 six, six and play a shooting guard, you're gonna be more you know, appealing to a college recruiter than if you're 5'6". That is, that is a fact, um, but it's nothing that you can do about it, but it is a factor. Six, does he have long arms, you know what I mean? Does he have a big wingspan, things like that. There's nothing you can do about that, right? So we oftentimes, again, the conversation always with college coach starts with the player. Is he a good enough player to move forward in the conversation, okay? The next thing I always get asked about is, okay, what kind of student is he, okay? Because obviously you guys understand that in order to qualify, just to, to be a student at a school, there's minimum requirements to just be eligible to go to that school and get accepted at that school. Um, so the next question is, is, you know, is he a good student, you know? Um, and some NAI schools and, and uh, Division three schools, and we'll go into where their scholarships is, it becomes really a big factor. Because, you know, at every school across the country, you know, it's hard to even think of many, you know, four-year schools that don't give scholarships based on academics, okay? And so it's a situation where your studies leads to money. And it's just as important as, as bouncing that basketball and shooting that jump shot and working on your craft, getting in the weight room. Your studies and your education is, is bar none the most important thing. Right? I mean, that's why you're going to go to the next level is because you want to get an education. Well, it becomes a major factor in the recruiting process just because, again, if you guys aren't eligible or, or you can be more appealing if you're a great student. Being a great student, guys, lets a college coach know that typically that you know how to manage your time, okay? You, you understand how to, how to uh, plan out your day. It shows the responsibility of turning in, you know, your homework, your assignments. Those are things that if it's a, we talked about this throughout the weekend, what separates you from, from everybody else, all right? Well, there's two players and their skill sets are close or the same, and a coach is trying to decide which one am I gonna offer the scholarship to? Which one am I gonna spend the time recruiting? And one's got a 3.9 GPA and one's got a 2.3 GPA. I mean, it's a no-brainer. They're gonna recruit the kid that's a, that's a better student, right? I mean, that's just, I mean, that just makes sense. So it's a way to separate yourself in more ways than one, right? Okay. And again, and we'll go through this. Every school across the country has scholarships for kids that have great grades. I've had kids that have even um, on top of their scholarship, room and board and everything. You know, they've received a check for $2,000 per semester just because, you know, they, got a, they had a 4.0 in, in high school and had a, you know, a really high test score. So again, make sure you're taking care of the business in the classroom because it leads to money, right? I mean, if I sat here and told you if you guys did a great job on your homework assignment tonight, I'd give you $20, you'd probably study a little harder, right? Well, academic scholarships, they come in thousands, tens of thousands, okay? So if you're not doing, getting your job done in the classroom, you're leaving money on the table. Does that make sense? Next, next question, and, and typically, and sometimes things will go in different directions as we have a conversation is, okay, what kind of kid is he? Is he a, a kid I can trust? Um, the, the, the teachers and people at school like him? Um, is he a good kid? Am I gonna have to worry about this kid on a weekend? You know, is he a kid that's a leader or is he a follower? Um, all of those things always become a factor because um, you guys are a representative of that program, of that school. And if they're going to recruit you, or there's going to be an issue, and they could have seen it beforehand, it makes their jobs in jeopardy. It makes them look bad. And let's just face it, you, you know, teammates want to have great, uh, great kids as teammates. Coaches want to work with great kids, okay? It's, it's a really important factor. And Coach um, Blaine, everybody that you come in contact with is going to form an opinion based on how you treat them, right? So as they're calling down, and if, and we'll talk about this, but if, 
if they're going to offer you a scholarship, invest that kind of time, energy, and money into you, they want to make sure they're going to call the different contacts in your life. They're going to call your counselor. They're going to call your high school coach. They're going to call a teammate or a friend that lives in that community, and they're going to ask him what kind of. And if you if you have somewhere along the way made it seem like you're not a good person, they're going to relay that message. You know what I mean? I, I've been coaching AAU basketball now for 17 years, and I can't. I've always said this to my players, and, I'm, and I'll say this again. I'm not going to lie to a college coach um, about your effort, your energy, your skill set, your attitude, because they're going to figure it out two weeks into the, you playing on their program, and I want to do this for the next 30 years. You think they're going to call me next year if I just ruin that relationship? Hey, this is the hardest working kid. He doesn't want to get off the couch because he wants to play video games or whatever. I'm not going to burn that relationship for you, and neither are the other people in that community. There wouldn't be a trusted source, right? Um, so those are the things that, that I want you guys to understand. That I know a lot of those are like, no kidding, I get that. But guys, you guys got to really understand that if you feel is really important, you've got to figure out what am I willing to sacrifice in order to gain that edge. And a lot of times what you're saying you're going to sacrifice is your time. You know, you're going you're gonna to sacrifice your time of doing something that may not be productive to do something that's going to give you an edge, right? Because if you want to be a better student, what do you need to do? You've got to study more. If you want to be a better shooter, what do you have to do? You've got to shoot more, right? So something's got to give throughout your day. You may have to give up sleeping. These are things that people don't want to sacrifice. Um, but if you've got something that you need to improve on, you've got to be say, what am I willing to sacrifice? You know. I, I was talking to my wife about this the other day, but I, I, I'm saying, I want to lose some weight. And she's like, well, you've got to sacrifice the way you eat then. And now I've got to make a decision, okay? Am I willing to sacrifice that in order to get what, what I want to improve on? And you guys got to all decide that as well. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, so anyways, that's kind of that. I, and again, I know that's kind of an obvious statement. Um, one thing I want, really want to harp on too for you guys that genuinely, genuinely want to get recruited is... A college coach, the process, I'll go through the process real quick of kind of how this works. If a college coach is interested in you, they're going to start by kind of kicking tires, making some phone calls, and reaching out to you. But even, even before that, a lot of times, if they're at an AAU tournament, or they see you playing, or they've heard you're, about you, the first thing they're going to do is go on to your social media and try and get a, a sense of who you are. All right? So... Again, college coach that you've always wanted to play at sees you play at an AAU tournament or hears about you from a friend or a contact. And the first thing they do is look you up on any social media they can find. Really think about what you put on social media, okay? So you got an understanding of what they're going to see first and what impression that they're, you're going to make right off the get, all right? If you think that it's a funny joke and maybe it's an inside joke amongst your buddies or whatever, you got to understand that they're going to see that, all right? A lot of assistant coaches, their first thing, they're like responsible for daily checking their recruits' social media and see what's going on. They're, I'm not sitting here telling you social media is bad. What I'm saying is understand that if you put that on there, something on there that is, that is uh, going to be a red alert for them, you, they're going to scratch you off the list. There's too many kids out there. There's millions of kids. I mean, uh, I can get a, a highlight film of a kid that lives in Russia in five minutes right now. So, so why would they sit here and, and look on your social media and find out that you're doing something you shouldn't be and, and continue to recruit you? Does that make sense? It's, you guys got to understand, there's so many players, and it's such a, a competitive um, a competitive you know, sport, basketball, everybody wants to play college ball, right? So be really aware of all that. Um, the next thing too is, you know, when you guys be prepared that if, as you're communicating with people out in the community, again, it's going to be repeated, but also on the phone. If you do get a phone call, understand that you've got to be, you've got to be professional. You've got to be genuine. Um, you've got to be mature. Uh, I think that's a, one of the big things that people can understand is, if you're talking to other people and, and if a coach when you're having that conversation, all right? 
um, ask good questions and all that. And we'll get we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. Um, so the process, again, let me just kind of go through. If a coach sees you and he likes what he sees, um, a lot of times he will then, uh, uh, again, before he'll ever call you, he's going to look you up on social media. He's going to look at probably calling people in your inner circle that he can find his circle and yours to find out what they're talking about. You know, if I, do I, is this kid that I'm going to want to recruit? Is he, you know, does, does everybody think he's at the level that my school is at? Um, and they don't want to waste their time. If they're like, yeah, he's getting recruited by a lot of schools that are maybe way higher than his level, then they may not. If they're, if they're like, nah, he sounds like he's a good fit, then that's when, the, again, after they're calling all the uh, people like your high school coach and, um, you know, your counselor or a friend or whatever, that's when they'll reach out to you. And I will add this. There's kind of this epidemic going around where I hear a lot of grumblings about, you know, my high school coach this and my high school coach that, all right? You know, I like my AU coach better or whatever. You guys got to understand that you've got to find a common ground with your high school coach. Whether you like him or not, you need to find a common ground of respect so that you guys can have a, a, a relationship that works. Does that make sense? Because whether you like it or not, they're going to call him and get his take, okay? And they're going to, like a lot of kids, whether you've played in my program or a different program, I get a lot of phone calls, and I'm gonna say good things if I, if I know good things, all right? But they're gonna go to that high school coach because they work with you on a daily basis, just like that college co coach is going to. And so again, if it, you've, whether you guys are best friends or, the, or maybe you've had some turmoil, it's a really mature thing to go and find some common ground. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? And, and some of you guys may have the best relationship ever with your high school coach, but I do hear grumblings here and there. We just don't get along and this and that. And I'm going, it's just like, it's, it's a mature thing to do also because it's going to be just like with your boss. Sometimes you're going to have a job and you just flat out don't like your boss. You don't see eye to eye. But you've got to come to common ground because he's the, I mean, he's the guy that, 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 that is essentially paying your paycheck. Your high school coach, I know it's not a job, but it's one of those where you're going to be had, he's going to be your coach for years. You got to figure out a way to make it work. Does that make sense? Um, so if, if things are going the right direction with recruiting and you're now you're the coach and you are calling back and forth and, and you guys are starting to communicate um, a lot of times, if it's going the right way, they're going to uh, try and get you on an unofficial or an official visit. Okay. Some confusion on unofficial versus official visits. Unofficial are, are on your dime. You guys are, are paying to go there. So for instance, let's say you're coming here to NNU and you uh, want to go and get a, you know, do an unofficial. That means that you're coming over. You can meet with the coaching staff. You can check out the campus. They can tour you around, whatever, but they're not, they can't pay for your meal. They can't pay for like a hotel or any of that. All right, it's on your dime. And you can take as many of those as you would like. You can go to different schools. And, and, and I, I would suggest for those of you that have some, especially when you're young, if there's some schools you want to check out, it's a great way to get in front of that coach and, and, and also take a real good look of what they're doing, go into a practice and all that. An official visit for your senior year, okay? I don't even think you can take an, an official visit until I can't remember what the date was, but I think it's early fall or it's, I, I can't remember exactly, late summer. Anyways, um, you can take five official visits and that's where they, they will fly you in. They will pay for your you know, housing when you're there and, and take, they, can take, they can take you to dinner or whatever. Um, and obviously, like I say, a coach, if you're young and they invite you over to take a, uh, to take a visit, um, like I say, if they're younger, they may be just inviting you in over and you may have to pay, but it's, again, maybe there's that serious about it and if you can get there, it might be a great situation um, for you to kind of get on their radar early. Um, and then from there, if, if it all goes well, they can offer you a scholarship. One thing that's happening a lot in college basketball is commitment and decommitting and all of that. When, it's a, when it's, you're just committing verbally, it's just a verbal contract. They, either side can break that. So it's not in, set in stone until you sign your letter of intent. And there's certain windows that you can sign that letter of intent. Once you sign, now it's hard to get out of. It's pretty binding, okay? But just know that nowadays it seems like people will make a verbal commitment 
And there's times where one side or the other will pull that commitment. So you guys got to understand that, again, until you actually sign that piece of paper, it's not, not set in stone, okay? Um, I've seen that process happen really, really quick, and I've had seen that process happen over a long period of time. For you older guys, you seniors, I've literally seen that a lot of times for when it comes to smaller colleges. Um, you'll see that happen in the spring, and it could be literally a coach you, sees you play in the state tournament or sees you play at a high school game or an AU tournament, and you get, so they say, hey, come get on campus and the next weekend. You, they, you talk over the phone for because they've never seen you play, or maybe they just and they got a new, you know maybe a new hire or whatever, and you go, they, you get over there on Friday, they on an official visit, and you go through the visit on Friday, Saturday, Sunday they offer you a scholarship, boom, it's done. I've seen it with younger guys where they literally re will recruit for multiple multiple years, um, you know, take several visits, and it takes a long period of time. So. Um, I think the one thing for a lot of the senior, like older guys, just keep scrapping and, and, and keep playing and it can happen really quick where you find your home late spring of your senior year. Um, or for younger guys, you could, I mean, it could be a longer process, obviously, because you're not going to make any decision for the most part until late, you know, like, like your early senior year. Um, so anyways, I think those are awesome. I, I also can go through um, briefly here. Um, the different colleges and some of the different levels. I'll just do that really quick. And then I'll also can just give you some pointers that I would say are good things if you want to be proactive in the recruiting process. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to do this because I know it's really bo this part of it's kind of boring. But um, every level, this is where things can be really confusing though. Every level has different scholarships. And as you get to Division II and NAI schools, a lot of them, it almost goes school to school on what kind of money and how many scholarships they have. For Division I, it's pretty, pretty black and white, okay? There's, there's around 350 Division I schools out there, and um, except for uh, like the Ivy League, um, where they don't do any athletic scholarships, it's all on a academic basis or on a federal you know, a, a needs basis. Um, they all get 13 full ride scholarships, okay? And again, it's either a full ride, which means you get tuition, books, room and board, et cetera. Um, and they get full, 13 of those, um, but they can't break them up into half scholarships or, or quarter scholarships or anything like that, okay? Division two schools, so like your Northwest, you know, Seattle Pacifics, uh, Colorado School of Mines, there's a lot of schools. Um, those ones, I think the max they can have is 10, but they will have, um, starting next year, they're changing the rule up a little bit, but they can give some academic scholarships um, that are mixed together with some athletic scholarships. Each school can be different, though, on how many scholarships they can give you. Um, all 10, others will only have four. And as you're going through the recruiting process for both uh, NCAA, NAI and NCAA Division II, that's one of those where you're, you might be going through the recruiting process. Nobody's really talking about how much money they're going to be giving. Eventually, you're just going to have to ask, okay, you know, what scholarship level, how, you know, how many scholarships do you guys have, where are we at, what are we looking for? But a lot of those schools, like in NEI school, Division I, they'll have 10 or less, and Division II, NEI Division II will have six or less. Um, and year to year, they may change, but they're going to ask you to fill out an application probably before they do anything else. And what I mean by that is they're going to say, fill out the, the application for the school, Let's see, you know, how much money you can get with academics and then see if we can fill in someone on the back end because a lot of kids will be getting a full ride scholarship, but it may not all be from uh, athletics. You know, they may come in with a half scholarship for academics and a half scholarship for, for athletics. They may come in with, you know, a quarter here and, and some scholar other types of scholarships to kind of fill in the gaps, you know, or they may just say, look, I'm going to give you $5,000 and, and you have some other scholarships, but I, that's all we have for you because they have to break up their money. So I know it gets really confusing with NAIA and Division II, but that's just because each school is different and they can change year to year. You know, they can pull a scholarship, they can add scholarships. It can be a really confusing type of deal. And try not to get frustrated. If you're going down that path, don't get frustrated with it. Just do the recruiting process as far as having great conversations, getting recruited, and then you can make your decision, you know, 
I, eventually they're going to have to say this is what we're offering you. But um, a lot of times I get phone calls and I get people asking me like, you know, how much money, how much money, are they, or how many scholarships do they have. And I, I, my answer a lot of times is I'm not, I'm not 100% positive. I think they have four, but you're going to need to go talk to them. You're going to have to ask them and how much they're divvying up and all that. Okay, does that make sense? It's really, con I know that part of it can be really confusing. NCAA Division Three, that's like your Whitman, Whitworths, um, uh, all Linfield. There's a lot of Division Three schools in like Oregon and Washington. They, those schools don't have any a uh, athletic scholarships. But again, they have a lot of academic scholarships. So if they're recruiting you, understand that they're recruiting you knowing that, that you're going to have to come in there and pay for whatever you know, academically doesn't get picked up. Um, again, like almost every school, if, if there's a financial need there, you can apply for all that. But again, you have to go through the admission process to do that. There's junior colleges also across the country where you can play the CSIs of the world. Um, there's what's the NWAC has a lot, you know, Treasure Valley Community College, Big Bend, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of them over there, Blue Mountain. Um, and again, for, for um, national junior colleges, there's a college of Southern Idaho, you know, uh, Salt Lake Community College. And then there's also another one in California where all the Californias have junior college, uh, uh, junior colleges over there too. Those are two-year schools. Um, they have a lot of different varying scholarships and different levels as well. But there's a lot of schools out there that have money as long as you're out there looking, you know. And again, it all comes down to, you know, if you're playing well and, and taking care of your, your, your business in the classroom, that's a great way for you to, again, to, uh, uh, you know, find scholarships and still play ball, you know. Um, the bottom line when it comes to all these schools is this. I know I'm talking a lot here, but the reality is, is you guys have got to find the right fit for you. Everybody has this, this you know, dream of saying, I want to play Division I, um, D1, D1 all the way. That's all, all I think about. That's all I want. When the reality is, is you've got to find the right fit for you to be successful, right? Um, if you've always wanted to be an engineer and you go to a school that doesn't have engineering, then you're going to school to do, to, because you want to play basketball. You're not gonna, the reality is, is when you're 22, 23 years old and basketball is over, now you're in a situation where what do you do for the next 35, 40 years of your life? Because the reality is you're going to school to build a career. You're not going to school just to play basketball. You're going to school so that you can, you can have a, a, a long, wonderful life, right? That's the whole point, to get your education so that you can, you can do the things that you want to do, right, and be happy in your career. So basketball is a great way to, to um, you know, do what you're passionate about, do what you love, be a part of a team. Um, it's a wonderful thing. Playing ball for college for me was fantastic. But I think one of the really important things that you can do is make sure you understand that finding a fit is what it's all about, you know. Um, let me give you a couple. Anybody have any questions? I know that I'm talking a ton here, and it's probably really boring for you guys. Are probably ready to fall asleep, but um, let me give you guys a couple things on that you guys can do um, as kind of a um, proactive way to get out in front of different colleges. I would say one is obviously I'm I'm a little biased to this, but I think that playing on an AU team, especially when you're coming from smaller communities, is really important. And the reason why I say that is it's a way for you guys to go to them, right? Um, you know, Boise, Idaho, or Twin Falls, or Idaho Falls, or wherever you're from, North Idaho, you know, there's some guys, I know there's some people from Oregon and, and, and wherever, but the reality is, is um, not a lot of colleges are going to come to that, that community to go watch you play, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of you guys can think back. How many how many colleges went to your guys' game throughout the last few years? You know, or your or your, or your high school's games. Probably just a handful, or maybe zero, right? Where AU comes in is that's an opportunity for you to go to them. It doesn't guarantee anything. It doesn't guarantee you that you're going to all of a sudden be playing in front of a hundred coaches. But at least it gives you a chance. You know that they are in that area and that they can come see you play, right? So that's a great way. And guys, the reality is this. If you continue to build your reputation, that's a great way for other people, not just college coaches, but scouts, other coaches to see you. Because it's all about being in a network, being around people that can pass your name along. Because 
Exposure can happen in so many different ways, right? You're here today, obviously you're playing in front of college coaches, but we're gonna send out a report to every college you know, in the country uh, that's, that at least can get your name out there in front of them, right? Um, and which is another thing, you guys are obviously here, so you guys are, are, are willing to be proactive in getting to different camps. Um, not only just kind of these type of showcase camps, but if there's schools that you really are interested in and they have an elite camp or a, um, some sort of an individual or team camp, you know, talk to your coach, talk to your parents. Maybe you can get there to go to those camps. If it's, and I know it's kind of more of a one-on-one -on -one deal. It's I'm going to University of Idaho's team, I mean, an elite camp. So you know that the Idaho uh, coaching staff will be there. But the reality is, is for one, if you've always wanted to go to Idaho or play at Idaho, it puts you right in front of their coaching staff, right? But the, here's the reality is, let's say you're not at that level. Let's say you're, you're more of an NAI D2 guy. Those Division I coaches know all those NAI and D2 schools around. And so even though um, you may not be a fit for the University of Idaho, you may be a great fit for one of their friends that's at a different school. And, and they're, it's a, a really small network, fraternity of coaches, and they want to help each other. So they may see you at their elite camp and pass your name along onto the LC State coach or the, or the you know, Central Washington coach or whatever. Um, again, as long as you're going in there and you're playing well and you're carrying yourself with maturity and, and are a great kid, they're going to want to help you. I mean, the reality is most coaches are in the business because they love, they love young men. They want to help you. They want to help you get, achieve your goals. So I think elite camps are great. I also think that if you can, um, one big thing that can help you in a proactive way is to also um, make like a, a eight minute highlight video um, of, and if you're younger and, and you don't, haven't played varsity yet, um, but a lot if varsity obviously is better but of you doing what you do best if you're a point guard you know and you're a ball handler you know you attacking and close out breaking down guys making plays you know if you're a shooter it's of you knocking down shots reading screens defender whatever whatever you do best to, to and eight minutes is why i say five to eight maybe ten minutes is um, plenty long enough it allows for somebody if they do pass or share your name um, that you can go, they can go on YouTube or one of those shared sites and be able to, you know, quickly pull up your, your video and see how you move, see how you play, see if they're interested. Does that make sense? Um, again, people will be driving around or at the gym and they'll be talking. And if you've ever been to an AU gym, you know, the coaches, there's, they'll have a patch of five coaches sitting there talking. And if they hear about a player, they may share it with each other. And it's so easy for them to pull up on their computer or their iPad or, or their phone and watch for a minute and go, oh, wow, okay, when does he play next? So if you have a highlight film and you are on an AU team and they, somebody passes the word, they may watch you for five minutes and go, wow, I like this kid. Look you up when you're playing and go watch you play, right? And again, if it, make sure it's, it's one of those where it's a clean video. Make sure you put on there your number, you know, your name and number and, and what color. You know, sometimes those videos can be a little blurry but you want to make sure they know exactly who they're looking at, right? So put on there, you know, in red, number 32 with your name, AAU team. So, you know, make sure that your video has enough information so that it's worthwhile to a coach. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me about the, you know, um, NCSA or some of the, a lot of those recruiting services that come around and they ask questions about those. I think the reality with some of those is it's all based on your ability to, to play the game, all right? If somebody comes to you and says, hey, for $5,000, you know, I'll put together film and I'll reach out to all these coaches and I'm going to get you a scholarship and all these things, the reality is, is if you're a good enough player that you can play at a, at a high enough level, reality is you probably don't need that. If you're doing all the other stuff, the, them, I know of, I've heard from a lot of coaches that when they get certain scouting services uh, an email in their inbox they go well one they get flooded with so many of those that they go I, you know they, they, they can't watch all of them and number two is that um, they know that somebody wrote a check for that it's not necessarily because they were this great player it's but they wrote a check and paid for it so a lot of times you know they're just going to skip right over and delete it you know um, the reality is is if you're doing all those other things and 
and, you become, and you're a great player, you'll know because your name's out there and if those guys are calling you, you'll know if it's working or not and you don't necessarily need to write that big check to, get, to have someone send out, e blast out emails to a million coaches. Um, I get also asked a lot about, you know, hey, I want to reach out to a, I want to reach out to a, a, a team. I want to reach out to a college. You know, um, should should mom and dad send that? Should I send that? What what's the best way of getting that to those five schools I really like? For one, moms and dads, I'm I have the same license you have. I have kids, and it gives you a license to be crazy, which is a wonderful thing. You want to do what's best for your kids, and that's an awesome deal. But that coach knows that you have the same license to be crazy as they do about their kids. So when, if they get an email from mom or dad, they're going to go, yeah, they just instantly go, okay, and they roll their eyes and they delete it. But as parents, just like I'm a parent, I want to do whatever I can to help my kids achieve their goals and dreams and whatever else. So what works even better is trying to find, not trying to find, talk to your high school coach. Talk to, you know, uh, some sort of reliable resource. Talk to your AAU coach or somebody that may have a different relationship that can write an honest kind of review or, or assessment that can put some stats in there and, and that link. And then you can be proactive that way by sending it out. Um, but they know it's from not, it's, it's at least somewhat of an outside source. Does that make sense? Because again, I think it's great to be proactive. You, you don't want to sit there and do nothing. You want to get the information out. But it's about making sure it's done the right way. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's hard to be, you know, really objective when you're a parent, which is wonderful, which is great. It's no different than me or any other parent. But the reality is, is if it's coming from a, a trust, they're going to be more prone to open it, read it, and digest and process that information and see if, it, if they're intrigued. Because the key is just get them to open it and read it, right? And then, they, and then click on your highlight film that you've made and away you go. And maybe it works and maybe you don't. It doesn't, but I know that a lot of parents have always asked me that, should I send out, you know, 50, 50 emails? And I'm like, I mean, you can, because you want to do something, but it'd be better if it was coming from your high school coach or somebody else that, you know what I mean? Um, so that, that was my, would be my suggestion on that. Um, I'm trying to think, is there any other questions or anything that's, that you guys have come across over the years and that you guys have always had a question about because I know we're going to get going here in 15 minutes but anything kids you know I think that one of the things for you younger guys the number one thing if you're you know a freshman sophomore or younger is just work on your craft um, I was talking to coach Rush about this and I thought this was a really a really um, telling and wonderful thing that he had talked about he goes everybody wants to set a goal but the reality is like playing Division One basketball is actually more than just a goal. It's a dream, okay? And the reason why we were talking about how it's not even necessarily a goal because a goal has got to be more along the lines of this week my goal is to get up 500 shots a day every day and work on my ball handling for 15 minutes and, and, and uh, um, you know, lift weights and do this and all. That, that's more of a goal, that's, and, and that means you're focusing on the process. Playing like a Division I is more essentially like a dream, and the reality is because it, there's so many factors that are outside of your control that you, can't, that you cannot change, okay? Whether you're going to be six foot nine or five foot six, that is out of your control, okay? Um, it, whether somebody, it's, it's no different than, than, than you, know, uh, you know, wanting to date some actress. I mean, you can't control how they feel about you or vice versa. So the reality is, is control what you can control. Set your goals and your processes up so that regardless of what happens, you know you gave it everything to achieve that dream. Does that make sense? Because again, there's so many factors that you guys can't control. So if you, but again, you can't control if you achieve that goal that week. I set up where I was going to get up X amount of shots and do this. At the end of the week, you charted it. I achieved that goal that week. Now you know you, whether you were successful with that goal or not. If you continue to do that, you're going to have success. With you older guys, some of you guys are, I know, older, you're seniors. Um, the reality is, is just keep scrapping, all right? Because it's going to work out the way it's supposed to. And it can happen extremely fast. I, again, I know a couple of you seniors here, 
you, good things are going to come your way. You're going to get some of the stuff that you want, but you just you can't get frustrated with the process because it's one, it's out of your control. But number two is the fact that if you have a great senior season, you're going to have your reputation as a great player. You're going to win a bunch of games. Your name's going to get out there, and it's going to happen quick. I've seen it happen too many times. But what what happens where guys don't perform well is they put too much pressure on why isn't why aren't people noticing me why am I not getting all these phone calls that I feel like I should be getting and it gets frustrating so they don't perform as well because they're focused again on the wrong thing they're focused on an opinion somebody else out there has of them as opposed to just saying how can I get better today how can I improve today what can I do to be my best self today you know, I can be, I be the best teammate in this, this play, this possession, this game, whatever. So um, also know that if you guys have questions, you know, fire them at me. It, it, whether you think of something next week, just go on, a, you know, Google search my name or go on that website or whatever, because I want to help. I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And you're getting at least to know that if it doesn't happen, you gave it everything you could to give it a try, to try and make it work. Does that make sense? What, any questions? Anything? Parents? Nothing? Yeah. What? Clint at IdahoSelect.org. Yep, and if you go on our website, it's on there too. But yeah, like I said, if you guys have questions, all this stuff that I just talked about too is on our Transition Hoops website under the, uh, I want to say recruiting tab, education tab, some of the more, you know, a lot of the information that we just went over if you want to review it. I know we talk, I mean, this is stuff that, that should be an ongoing conversation because it is confusing, but control what you can control. You can only control how you're going to play in this next two-hour session. Focus on that, and good things will happen, I promise. Anything else? Anybody? All right, we'll get started in like 10 minutes.